I'm talking about myself a guitar. I want to make myself a guitar. Look at the phone book. What can I do? You want it in the phone book? How's it going on the internet? I want it on the internet. The Mark Bader guitar. So I showed up his place. She said we're going to make a guitar. I said I don't know how to make a guitar. I said I know how to make a guitar. So I said hey, can we learn how to make a guitar? So we made a guitar. So I said hey, can we learn how to make a guitar? So we made a guitar. Can't speak of, 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 you guys actually saw me um, glue on this headstock veneer for custom guitar that I'm making for Roland. So this is the 400 year old walnut. Look at that. It's going to be lovely once we get the finish on, eh? Um, some of you might notice that the, the fretboard's already finished, look. <whistles> By our Lewis. Does all our spraying for us. Um, we are actually working right as we speak. Filming's already commenced on the uh, the finishing course. So um, for those of you who don't know, the guitar making channel and the guitar making website, guitarmake.co.uk, is all about um, how to build your own guitar. And what I've done is I've, starting with a blank piece of paper, we lay out a guitar and step by step, we design and build your dream guitar, um, whatever it might be. I do recommend that you start with something fairly basic like this, but I mean, the sky's the limit really. Anybody can go out and change the bit of wood, you can make it from anything you want. And there's all sorts of customizations you can make. As you'll see, if you head to the forum on the guitar making site, um, it's free to join and you can go and see what all our current members are building right now. So you don't have to take my word for it, you can, uh, go and have a look there and see what everybody else is getting up to but this is what's keeping me busy currently and um, i've got a couple of builds on the go and this is one of them so um on the last live stream you saw me gluing on the headstock um but there's been quite a lot of action in the forum and um people are asking how can you make a headstock veneer if you don't have the sander thicknesser that i use to make veneers so obviously I've got all the machines you could dream of to, to make guitars, um, short of CNC. Um, um, but all my methods are designed for people at home who haven't got all these this fancy equipment. So um, one option would be just to buy your veneer ready-made, as I said on, on the day. Um, if you want to see that, by the way, that's the, the last live stream. We stream um, every Wednesday and Saturday at 1pm, that's our time. Um, we're going to be doing that for the foreseeable future, hopefully answering all your guitar making questions. Um, so um, on Wednesday, you saw me doing that and people are asking me, how do we make a headstock veneer if we haven't got those machines? So I'm going to show you that, just starting with this great big lump of offcut. So if you've got a big lump of offcut, you want to make a headstock veneer, then stick around. I'm going to show you exactly how we do that. Um, but also, I just want to give a shout out to a few of our members. Um, things have been going really um, amazingly good on the forum. And uh, I can't always, it's so busy at the moment that I can't get to answer every question. 
<clears throat> but if you join up as a premium member, then you get access to all the courses. And then as you're doing the course, if you've got a question, you'll see that there's a button um, at the side, which is ask a question. And I always make sure I answer all those questions directly to our premium members. Um, but on the forum, it's so busy, getting so busy now that I just can't possibly keep up with, I think there's about 200 or 300, I checked this morning, notifications on it. So, <laughs> so obviously we've hit a nerve and people are obviously interested in this. So um, that's brilliant. Um, we love it. But most of all, we love our members. Um, just want to give a shout out to a few today. So, um, especially TV 101, who's um, he's been busy answering a lot of the questions that I haven't got to, and he he's been beating me to it a few times. Is so, that detention? And he he's uh, he always gets the good answers as well. So um, that's one thing that I'm really I was really a bit worried about at the start of the forum was people answering questions and getting details wrong and that kind of thing. So I do check every answer and make sure that it's all correct. Um, but yeah, TV 101, thank you very much for um, answering those questions for us and actually beating us to it. So awesome. I need to say something now. Right, go on. TV 101's put in the chat that he hopes this session today is a really long one because he's got to mow the lawn when it finishes. <laughs> <laughs> right, so yeah. So you're using this as a... A way to get out of mowing the lawn. It might rain. Oh, and he says he was taught by a master. Oh. Well, cheers. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you to everybody who's joined and to all our premium members who are there. Um, you know, it's a fantastic community that is actually helping each other out, not like most of these toxic communities that you find on the internet. Um, you know, we just don't stand for any of that. Um, we're here to help not to show off or brag or any of that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, if, if you've got any questions or if you're interested in that kind of thing, head over to the forum. It's all free. But if you want the full courses, then you'll have to become a premium member. Because obviously I'm not here for my own well-being. I'm here, obviously, trying to get um, people to join up as premium members. My ultimate goal is to create a guitar-making revolution where everybody makes their own guitars. I think there should be a musician on every street who's able to earn a living and there should also be a guitar maker, at least one guitar maker in every town um, or every district. Um, there's plenty of guitarists out there and plenty of room for us all. So there's no need for any one-upmanship. Um, we're all there to help. Come on, they're thank they're, he's getting little claps and people are thanking Oh, him cheers, personally. folks. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Thank you, TV. Um, because no. guitar making... Um, it changed my life, dragged me out of the gutter, gave me a, a reason for living really, and this is my life. Um, I'm a professional guitar maker. We're also musicians as well, but of course in the current situation, all of our gigging work's dried up. Um, I'm not actually allowed to run courses. We used to have four people at a time come to the workshop and we'd run guitar making courses here. We can't do that anymore at the moment. So, but we're, look, we're working on alternatives. Yeah, we are working on how we're going to somehow get back to some kind of normality, but that's not going to happen for a while. So at the moment, this is kind of all we've got is, um, I feel like I'm a teenager busking again um, for, my, for my living. So if you want to support us, head over to the, um, the guitarmaking.co.uk site and you can become um, you can just become a free member if you just want to be a lurker. That's probably what I would do. <laughs> or if you want to support us, you can become a supporter and you can also become a premium member if you want full access to the um, professionally edited step-by-step -step courses, which includes build your own electric and acoustic guitars. Right, so having said all that... Right, we've got a couple of new... We've got some new people online. Right, hello, is, new people. Uh, and just, just one of them is called Chin Jazz, and he's not joined us before. Um, Howdy, Chin Jazz. Can you explain how, how, our, how we work on the live streams about questions and all that kind of stuff? Right, so what usually happens on our live streams, we're here every Wednesday and Saturday, as I said, at one o'clock, and it usually lasts from about half an hour to an hour. Sometimes we run over. Um, but what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm trying to um, give away as much information as I possibly can for free in the time that I've got. Um, so 
I always do a live demo. So every session you'll always see me doing some kind of live demo, or maybe two. Um, and we always do a question and answer. Sometimes we do questions as we go. Sometimes I'll say, can you hold your questions until the end? But if you've got anything um, that you want me to answer, if you've got any questions or anything like that you want me to say, then um, leave, a, leave it in the comments and Carol shouts it out for me. We can also put it on the screen as well, but we find that a bit distracting. And uh, I've only got a tiny screen to look at, so I can't really read it anyway. But um, yeah, so Carol usually heckles me from the corner there and shouts out the questions. So if you've got any questions or comments, you know what to do. Um, so today I'm going to concentrate on how to make your own headstock veneer. But if there's time, I'm also going to show you a little trick for locating bridges, because that's another question that's come up on the forum. So can I go ahead and start, Carol? Yeah. Could you You'll need to get on the camera because the first thing I need to do is head over to the bandsaw. Okay. So this is my lump of wood and um, most lumps of wood come kind of rough sawn like this. So uh, it's not easy to work with a, with a rough sawn surface. First thing we've got to do is get that smooth. I've got one flat side. So we could just choose to use that side. I mean, any sensible person would do that. But if you had rough sawn timber to work with, the easiest thing to do would probably be just to get a hand plane and plane it reasonably flat. Can I, can I, can I interject? You can interject. Uh, because do you remember Luke Lutieria de Polka, the, the, the working man of Luthia? Yeah, Paul, Paul Man's Man, Luthia. Paul Man's Luthia. He said that he, when he started, started out, he actually, he used, um, he cut a plank out of a tree with, with a handsaw. He used to cut planks yeah. with handsaws. Why and not? Then, and then plane to thickness. Where are you? Yeah. So that, you Been know. there. Been there, <laughs> done it myself, yeah. It's just, it's just time, isn't it? Um, yeah, I did say at the start that I've got all these fancy gadgets now, but I didn't have all this at the start, let me tell you. Um, we literally did everything by hand. Um, and I, I was usually doing batches of four, so I would do four at a time. So there's, um, there's me bit of wood in a vice. Planes work a lot better if you don't go straight. You want to actually go on a slight angle like this. Put your, um, put your plane at a slight angle and then instead of just going like dunk, it will take a slice in motion, be a lot easier. So I'm not going to worry about making this perfect or anything, I'm just doing it really fast. Okay, so it's reasonably flat. That's pretty good. You can see with a nice sharp plane um, how easy that kind of thing is. Um, so now I've got my flat side. What I'm going to do now is just take a slice on the bandsaw. Over here, Carl. Don't touch the light, Carol. Camera, please. Can we zoom in a bit? Um, yeah. When you say health and safety, Carol, what do you mean? What do you want me to put on? What do you want me to put on? I do have a whole hour and a half long live stream about using the bandsaw. And it, this is one of the tools that some people are nervous of using. 
but basically it's just a, a long band of metal with teeth on it. It spins this way, so it pushes your piece of wood down onto the table. So really it does most of the work for you and uh, the trick is just to be gentle and don't force anything. Um, keep your hands well away from the blades. If you're at all unsure about any of this kind of thing, then there are other training courses you can go which concentrate just on this. You might want to get some one-on-one -on -one training with, um, with someone. Um, but any idiot can go and buy one of these from a hardware store and start using it straight away. There are no qualifications or anything you need to, to use one. But um, if anybody ever came to any harm um, through using a bandsaw that had anything to do with guitar making, it would really, it would be the end of it for me. So if you are considering doing any kind of this kind of stuff um, and you're not sure about it, make sure to get some proper help. Um, if you're under 16, for instance, get some, get some adult guidance. Um, if you're at school, usually your teacher will be up for it, um, as long as you didn't go to my school. So I'm just going to take the th a thin slice off, as thin as I can get, basically, and um, to give myself the best chance of success, if I was doing this in real life, I would probably do this two or three times so that I've got a few spares. In this case, I'm just going to take a slice off now and go for it. You'll notice me keeping my hands as far as possible from the blades. So at halfway, I'm going to switch over and start pulling it through. So there's no way that I can injure myself. There we are. The worst thing that I see a lot of people doing is um, moving their hands closer and closer to the blade. So let's not do that. Can you zoom right out now, Carol, please? It went really dark when you zoomed in. I don't know if you noticed. She's giving me the Vs now. <laughs> so there it is. There's my piece. And as you can see, it's a bit wonky. Uh, it's a lot thinner there, for instance, I've got a thin corner. It's really hard to do that kind of thing on the bandsaw unless you've got a really expensive bandsaw. Um, you just have to do your best, really. So to make that into a veneer now, um, I'm, I'm going to use a, a little trick. So let me just set that up for you and I'll show you what I'm doing. So I'm going to use my, um, my headstock thickness jig. This is basically just three lumps of scrap wood. One, two, three. So these, these act as, oh, one camera. These act as um, rails. The router's going to guide along these rails. I'm going to stick my veneer into there and then we can just take a slice, uh, route off layers until we've got a veneer left. So um, here's the trick really, it is um, double sided tape. So you guys, you veterans will know all about this. Um, this is, it's not ordinary double sided tape. Any double sided tape will work, but this is called exhibition tape. It was actually invented for the NEC, the National Exhibition Centre in the UK. Um, it was invented because every time they did an exhibition um, people used to use carpet tape to stick down carpet and then at the end they would rip the carpet up and it would destroy all the tiles underneath. So the NEC actually commissioned this tape to be made and I'm quite glad they did because it was perfect for our use. Um, so what we do is we stick it on, double sided tape, I'm going to trim off some of the excess, 
and then peel up the corners. So, um, with double-sided tape, dust is your enemy. You've got to keep, um, keep your pieces as clean as possible wherever you're sticking it to. So what I normally do is I can peel the corners up and then I can leave that to one side until I'm ready to, to go. So I think I'll just set my router up then while I'm doing that. Here's my router. And this has got um, this plastic base on it. Again, this is um, included as part of the course is how we make this base. This base has actually got multiple uses. I also use it for making rosettes as well, but that's another story. Um, in our case, we're using it to span the gap between those two rails so that the router will rest on these two rails. We need a, a larger base than is normally supplied. And this is just one way to do it, folks. There are other ways. Um, if anyone out there knows another way to make um, veneers without using a sander thicknesser, then make sure to uh, leave it in the comments. Um, so we're all about sharing information here. Obviously, we need to make a living, but it's all about, um, you know, in the end, I just want everybody to be making guitars. So, um, sticking my piece of veneer down into there, it needs to be clean and free from dust. I'm going to put a bit of scrap wood on top and then give it a squeeze with a clamp. So with this tape, the harder you squeeze, the harder it sticks. I'm not going to do it too hard, I'm just going to give it a nip. And now we can simply route off in layers. I am going to need my health and safety for this. We can route off in layers um, until our veneer is just one millimetre thick. So I'm going to have to adjust my router here because I've got a depth stop set. Um, if you're not sure how to use a router again, um, the same as I was saying about bandsaw. Um, again, I have done a whole hour long live stream where we just concentrated on the router. So you can go and watch that, that's for free. Um, but if you join up on the course, I take you through um, every little part of it. So I tell you when to turn the router on, what to do with it, when to switch it off, everything to keep you as safe as possible. So that's what it's all about. So in this case, my router isn't actually long enough to touch the bit of wood. So I'm going to have to put a longer cutter in. Should have thought of that, shouldn't I? What's going on? Don't wanna, you don't want to know. <laughs> right, I've got to put it on two. I've run out of hands. I've run out of <laughs> Yeah, I can't switch the cameras. And... Um, do you want any questions? Let me just do this, and then we'll do questions. Take it down to touch the wood. Um, we don't want to take too much off at a time. I'm just going to take off some layers until our veneer is nice and flat. Coming loose. 
So I didn't clean the I didn't clean the block enough. So if that happens, you just got to start again. The best way to clean this off actually is to use an old bit of double-sided tape and that gets all the dust off for you. So as I said, dust is your enemy when it comes to double-sided tape. But the main advantage of this exhibition tape as opposed to your crappy uh, carpet tape is, did you see how easy it comes off? So if you were using carpet tape, um, it's really difficult to get it off again. It can take longer to get it off than it takes to do the actual job. So um, this exhibition tape is much better. Look. Mark, Mark Thomas says he can smell the walnut. He feels like he can smell the walnut. Lovely. I don't want it to stick down too hard because there's going to come a point where we've got to get it off, obviously. So if it's, if it's stuck down too hard, we won't be able to get it off again without breaking it. So here we go again. So there's one layer. This is what we call surface routing. So I'm going, to, I'm going to adjust my depth stop here now. You can see um, we've still got a bit of thickness there. Uh, about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to take another couple of mil off, I reckon. I would say when you're doing this kind of job, don't take it off any more than two mil. And if you can, finish with a nice fine pass of maybe half a mil to a mil and you get a better finish. Always move your cup of tea out of the way. Now if I was doing this in real life, if it wasn't live on the internet, I might take a bit more time over it. So, uh... A quick whiff of sandpaper. Job done. So it's a bit rough, but you can see we've got a veneer. Um, it can be a bit tricky sometimes to get it off. But if you're careful, it should be all right. There we go. Beautiful. There we go. So that's one way to make a headstock veneer. Um, if you don't have a thickness machine, thickness sanding machine. Needs a bit more sanding to clean that up or scraping, but there you go. So did you have any questions, Carol, while I just clear my bench? Yeah, yeah. Right, let's just have a question. So 
directly relevant to what you've just done. Robin Gosman says, how thin can you go without breaking it when you pull off the tape? You want to be aiming for about a mil. My headstock veneers are usually about a mil. Um, if you buy veneer, it's usually about 0.6 of a mil. Um, but different thicknesses are available, but that's standard. The double-sided tape, by the way, is available on the, on the site. Um, if you can't find it anywhere else. It's called Exhibition Tape or NET Tape. Um, but to make it easy for you, we've, we supply it on the, on the okay, site. We'll just run through it do a few questions then? Yep. Um, right. Quick fire round on questions. Okay, so... Um... And then I'm going to show you a little slideshow of some of the... Um, some of the veneer stuff that's been going on on the headstock this week. Right, so um, actually James Perry um, he asked you if you had any thoughts on the safety planer, and um, uh, yeah, Darren, we mentioned the safety planer. Down from Bagshaw, down from Bagshaw, Bag, Bag Press has yeah. uh, had a comment too. Yeah, um, the safety planer um, is okay, but it's not. Um, I did talk about it during the last live stream. Um, my problem with it is that it puts uh, side loads on the um, on the drill. So if you don't know what a safety planer is, it's basically a large large cutter that goes into a, a pedestal drill like this, and then you can slide your piece of wood under it, and it will it will basically do what my router did there. Um, but the problem with it is it's puts putting a side load on your um, pedestal drill, so it's going to get worn out. It's going to destroy your drill. Um, that's why I don't like using them. Well, but if it's all you've got, then by all means use it. You use what you've got, don't you? Um, and it gives them shivers thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, and also they call it a safety planer, but I think um, it's a not very safety planer <laughs> because you, you have to. Get sued for that. It's no safer than any other planer in the wrong right hands. Um, it's shaped so that supposedly you can't it's not easy to get your hands under it and, and injure yourself but um still i prefer my method with a router because if you look at pe people are always a bit of afraid about the routers as well um obviously the two tools that people are most afraid of bandsaw and router okay with the bandsaw keep your hands well away from the blade it can't do you any harm with the router look if you hold these two handles the cutter's right down here. You, you can't hurt yourself with a router either. Um, like I say, I've, I've been doing this for over 20 years now. Since my hair was only half an inch long. <laughs> since I had a crew cut. <laughs> they think I'm joking. I'm not joking. Um, my hair's got longer and longer. I've made it this far <laughs> without injury. And touch wood, the worst injury we've ever had in the workshop with over 400 students is dust in the eye. So if you've got a, a cavity like this, don't blow in it like you don't blow into it. Don't take any of your advice. Because it will blow back into your face. And believe it or not, that is the worst injury we've had on the course. Touching wood. Right, so listen, Mark, Rock and Roller 912 says, could you use a router to flatten the first side instead of a hand plane? Yes, you could. Um, but I, I haven't got a vice in my pattern, if you see what I mean, in my jig. So the, only, the problem would be sticking it down, because if it's not flat, it's hard to stick down. So you just need one side flat in order to stick it down. The double-sided tape won't stick to a rough sawn, um, uneven surface. So that's why you need one side flat. Stick the flat side down and then machine the other side flat. Right, so... Um, I suppose you... another way we could have done it is we could have used a couple of wedges, maybe, to wedge the piece of wood in. And then we could have routed one side flat and then stuck some tape on and turned it over. There's always ways to do it. Um, spend a bit of time thinking about it. You might come up with a better way than me. Okay, well... Um, if you do, make sure to leave it in the comments. There's been <laughs> and we'll tell everybody else about it. If you um, could be enjoying your uh, NEC tape, um, 
It's good stuff. TV101 said, who's going to ask Mark about the masking tape here? No, we're not going to mention um, that, TV. And uh, he said, it's your turn, Deej. So there's a whole load of stuff going on about that, which we'll have to... Yeah, so I've about. noticed some other guitar makers have put up videos about that now. It's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> isn't that interesting? So, um, right, there's a couple of other things. Um, right, so Green, um, it's, um, Green Mirror 555 said... <laughs> he said... So if we send Mark into the wilderness with a leather man, would he come out again sometime later with a guitar? <laughs> yeah, or, or a spoon. And um, TV 101 reckons that is a great idea for a reality show. <laughs> Sending you into the wilderness with a leather man. I'm Can you it. explain what a leather man is? Somebody set up a GoFundMe, for God's sake. <laughs> set up a GoFundMe, send me off. I'm up for it. What is a leather man? A leather man, it's a multi-tool. It's like a, it's like the modern version of the Swiss Army knife, isn't it? But better. So the other question that we've been getting uh, that we got on the forum recently is um, locating the bridge. So have we got 10 minutes? Got, have you got 10 what minutes? What time is it now? It's 22, you've got loads. You've got as long, TV 101 wants to keep you busy. Okay, brilliant. Let's do this then. So, um, somebody was asking, actually it was Robin, let's play the film, Carol, let's play the little slideshow. Right. So, because um, it leads into this bit, right? So that we, there's, a, there's been a flurry of activity on the forum and some people have been putting up a couple of examples of headstock veneers. So we, we'll, um, after last week's, after, since Wednesday, so um, we're going to have a couple, of, a look at a couple of them. Do you want me to? Um... <laughs> and it allows me to um, just talk about Robin because Robin's um, Robin's building a guitar um, using our methods, and uh, right, I'm going to push you in. There's some pictures on that. So, uh, shall I just press play then? And a link smoothly links us into the next bit. Do I just press play? You have to put it up and then press play. Yeah. And. Okay, here we go. Oh. I did that already. Go on then. So, um, Do you want me to put it let's back? play that again. Yeah. You pulled me off again. Stop it. Right, so why would you have a headstock? Well, Robin, thank you for providing us <laughs> with this picture. Um, we're very grateful for you allowing us to um, see your mistakes. So thanks for that. Here's a little wobble that Robin had with the router that you can see. And um, that's one reason why you might want to use a veneer. Stick a veneer on, nobody's none the wiser, are they? Who would know? As long as it's not structural or anything, it's fine. That looks fine to me. So thanks for that, Robin. I'm, I'm going to do you a little favour in a minute help you out with your bridge location. So there's a lot, nice little headstock that's bound. Unfortunately, I haven't got written down the names of whose these are. So, um, you know who you are. Is that playing, Carol? Yeah. That one's a, he, there he is using the Rima. So using the methods that I showed you last week, if you, if you want to know how that's done, Watch last week's live stream and you'll see that. And so this was um, Rock and Roller, who mentioned on live stream last time about he'd put a veneer on the back of a headstock to hide um, a bit of damage on this framus. So it's not a brilliant picture, it's at the back of the headstock. But um, it shows that um, it worked and uh, looks pretty good to me, Rock and Roller. So um, yeah, thanks for sharing that with us. Top job. Um, looks perfect to me. I would never know that that's been repaired. And now, um, let's pause on this one. Look at this. Respect. This is Robin's workstation. He has no electricity, so his lights are powered by batteries. And there he is building his guitar. So if you think you haven't got the, the, the space or a, a brilliant workshop in order to build a guitar. Don't let that put you off. No. It hasn't let Robin put him off, has it? No. Um, 
So he's powering from a solar panel on the roof. And um, I don't know what he does if he wants to use a power tool, but um, I know from experience that um, I once built a guitar in a tent using solar panels and batteries, and we used an inverter. So you can plug this onto your batteries and you get 240 volts out. So you can use um, power tools in a shed where you haven't got power. What about that? And look at this. Can we go back one, Carol? Going the wrong way. And we've gone back to the start now. Don't give me grief. They notice when you give me grief. Right. Let me do the controls. I've got a control here I can use. Okay, there you are. Let's play now. Is it playing? Right, next picture. You said you can control it. Is it playing? Yes. No, you stopped it again. I haven't touched it. Right, there we go. It's playing. Oh. It's playing. We need another laptop. And then we can have more control. Right, here we go. Shoo! Innovation, folks. <laughs> oh, it's bloody moved again. Did you not pause it on that one? You said you could control it. Yeah, and I tried to pause it and it didn't... Well, you... then that means you can't control it. So don't give me, don't give me grief. Did you try and pause it? No, because you said you could control it. Right. Let's not both try and control it at the same time. No, that's what I, I would definitely would do. <sighs> right. Not, look. Robin <laughs> has managed to combine two of my jigs into one here. Um, on the course, I've got a whole section which shows you um, how to make all the little jigs, like the thickness of jig that I showed you a minute ago. There are, it's only just a handful of, um, call them jigs and fixtures that you'll need to make a guitar. Um, Robin's combined two of them here. Now I don't normally do this because, well, I've got loads of space and I find it's better to have individual jigs for each job. But um, Robin, as you saw, is quite short of space. And so why not combine them into one? And uh, that's what I like to see, bit of innovation. So well done, Robin. He's He's uh, stuck two jigs into one there. The only thing I would say is that um, on the next picture you can see he's using clamp down. Um, you've got to make sure that there's some wedge underneath so that it's not bending anything. Um, right, so he said the jig worked perfectly, but he took a little bit too much off. So um, there is not a guitar build in the world or probably extremely rare that goes perfectly from start to finish. Um, but we're here to help you if something does go wrong, there is always something you can do, believe it or not. And in this case, um, Robin was just able to take the bit that he'd cut off earlier, glue it on and repeat the operation and, uh, and it worked perfectly. So here's his neck glued in and um, started again. Robin had a question about, if you could just pause it on that last picture, Carol. Do you want me to take it back to the end? Yeah, on that last picture, pause it there. So Robin had a question about um, the location of the bridge. So I'm just going to see if I can uh, do something about that now right, in that. the last 10 minutes before the live stream finishes. So uh, yeah, if you could bring us back into the room, Carol. Yeah, I know, we should have just quit while we were ahead. I wish I'd quit while I was ahead. ahead. Do us a favour, Carol. Can you find me a tailpiece for wrap over? There's lots of different types of bridges. But the, um, I didn't bring it back. Lordy law. <sighs> There's lots of different types of bridges, but fitting them is pretty much all the same. So if I show you how to fit this bridge, um, then it should really work with all bridges. 
I was going to call this section um, how to fit any bridge, but we'll do that again. We'll do it again at some point and I'll get loads of other bridges out and show you. But for now, let's have a look. In order to locate your bridge, you need to know the scale length. So in this case, it's um, 25 inches. So I've got my neck in position. If it was a bolt on neck, I'd bolt my neck on. If it's a set neck, I'd have it in position, preferably glued in. Um, I've got a go to one. So I need a. Oh, all sorts of stuff. Pencil. 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 Decent ruler. Pencil. Ruler. Yeah, my sh decent short ruler. So the neck needs to be in position because we need to find the centre. This is a one piece body, really unusual to get a one piece body like this. So there's no center line on it. We need to draw one. So we're going to take it from the neck. So with the neck in position, I'm going to draw a line to represent the side of the neck there. Can you see that? Bloody hell. Of course you can't see it, can you? So, can we see this? On camera four, do you want this over on two? Do you want this to be on four over here? Would that be better? Yes, please. You need to flip between the two, preferably. Okay. You get the idea. So, I've drawn on the sides of the neck now. So, now we can use my method of. Finding the centre. Oh, jeez. We've not got a ruler. Yeah, all the tap ones. Going to get a bit of Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> right, so what I like to do is use a nice round number like 10, and then looking at the edges without doing any maths at all, I can easily find the centre. If I had a decent ruler, you guys could see it too. Let's try this one. I tell you what, I'll use the. Um, I'll use the inches side, and it might be a bit clearer. If you can zoom in, that's brilliant, thank you. Yeah, the perspective kind of kills it though. So, um, a nice round number like 10, and then I can get it exactly in the middle without using any maths, just using these. Obviously it's more accurate if you do it in millimetres. So nice round number in the middle and then looking at the edges, look, you can get that really accurate. Don't know if uh, that will help. That's good. Do you want it on two? Do you see two? Look. Two looks right. What do you think? Four. Carol, I can't watch this and that, so you'll have to choose. Okay. Well, good. So I'm going to mark that in two places. Right, we, yeah. And then join it up. I've moved your overhead so that they can't see. Join it up with a centre line. Okay, so the idea of a centre line. <laughs> Is now I can use a square my little plastic square. 
was supposed to get all this ready, but um, it was chaos this morning. Okay. I can't do this without a square, so I need to find a square. Right. Well, talk, um, tell them why it's important to do this, because uh, Tom has been saying that it, it, it's really critical to get this right. Yeah, obviously, this is one of the most important things when you're building a guitar is to get the bridge in the right place. Um, obviously, guitar makers, guitar players probably know this, but when you, um, when you're playing a guitar, obviously you're pressing your strings down onto the frets. When you bend the string, you're actually raising the pitch slightly. So in order to compensate for that, so the guitar doesn't sound out of tune, um, you have to move the bridge back slightly. Obviously the longer the string is, the flatter the note. So um, when you bend the string, it makes the, next, it makes the, the note slightly sharp. So to bring it back in tune, the bridge is actually set back by a tiny amount. Um, that's our intonation adjustment. And um, it actually has more of an effect on, on the bass strings. So thicker strings, when you bend them, go up in pitch faster and further than the thin strings, which is why when you look at, um, when you look at a bridge, look at an acoustic bridge or, or any bridge, you'll see that they're usually on an angle tipped towards the back like this. I'm exaggerating. So what you need to do is measure your scale length and on the treble side you add 1.5 mil or a sixteenth of an inch and on the bass side you add 3 mil or an eighth of an inch. So um, I'm just going to do that, forget the square Carol, we've lost the square. I'm going to do it without the square. So. Um, Marking off the scale length, in this case it's 25 inches. So with my um, ruler lined up here, at the end of the nut here, I'm going to mark off 25 inches, which is here. Now because, um, because I haven't got my square, I'm going to have to do it on both sides. So that would be our intonation line. No, it wouldn't. That would be our scale length line, sorry. That's our scale length line. To make it um, in tune, we're going to add a sixteenth of an inch or 1.5 mil. And then three mil here. And that gives us our intonation line. So what we can do now with any bridge is place it on and try and line up these saddles as close as possible with that intonation line. And you've also got these lines here where you can align your bridge top to bottom. Okay, so you need to obviously have it lined up um, if it's too far this way, then the strings will hang off the side of the neck here. If it's too far up this way, strings are going to hang off here. So it needs to be in the middle. And we're lining up this intonation line as close as possible with the saddle line. You can see in this case, the bridge is actually sitting on straight. Some of these bridges you'll find there isn't enough adjustment and they sit on an angle. Some of them sit on straight. With some of them you've got the option. So um, the, the, um, the stop tail piece at the back would go um, about an inch and five eighths behind this line. So let's join that up. So an inch and five eighths is about 
40 mil. So it's about 40 mil, 40 to 50 mil, I would say, behind this line. That's where I put it, behind the scale length line. 40 to 50 mil. And then we can line that up. So that's where that goes. So that's the tunematic with a stop tail piece. This bridge is actually having a one piece bridge, which is this one, but the same thing. So if you can just line it up exactly where it needs to be and then mark the center of the, of the, um, the bridge holes. Can I just ask a question now? Then that will work with any bridge. Um, so, uh, I'm just going to show you an, another type of bridge just to prove that it works with any bridge and then we'll do Carol's questions. <clears throat> so here's a different kind of bridge but the same method works. So we can use these outside two lines to locate our bridge up and down and then there's the intonation line so we need that to line up with the takeoff point of the saddle so you just work out where the string takes off from and you try and line it up as close as possible with the intonation line so in this case look it would be you can line it up, line it up with these lines on the side there. Um, this one's got a mountain screw in the centre, which helps. You can line that up with the centre line if you've got a centre line. So we can line that up and then mark those screw holes like that. And that would be where we would drill these holes. Okay, so this one you'd line it up as close as you can and then you can mark the center of those holes. Um, now this... This is actually basically the standard tunematic bridge with the stop tail piece combined into a wrap over bridge. So if you haven't seen one of these before, um, that's what that is. So that's a, these are a bit more expensive, but on some guitars, like particularly this one, uh, sometimes it's nicer to just have one lump of metal on it instead of two lumps. Uh, if I just zoom out a little bit. Um, this method of locating also works with trems as well. Um, but I might save that for another live stream just to demonstrate that. So this one, for instance, we line it up as accurate as we can with that and then up and down. This one would go there and then we can mark the center of those location pins. Okay, so hopefully that made some kind of sense to somebody. Um, thanks for those questions, Robin. And thanks for sharing us with us, the little minor hiccup on the headstock, um, because that's what it's all about. Um, sharing information, and we really appreciate it. So um, you'll be getting some hero points for that. And also TV 101 gets hero points for um, answering questions. Um, hero points are real, by the way. <laughs> hero points are a real thing on guitarmaking.co.uk. You can be a guitar making hero. Um, you actually earn points if you make a comment or put up a picture. Anything you do basically on the forum actually has a, a value to me personally because it attracts other people to the site. So, um, I want to give something back to everybody who's contributing to the forum. And so um, it works by you accrue hero points by contributing to the forum 
And the best way to do it is to actually answer somebody's question. If somebody puts up a question and you answer it, then you get awarded hero points. Um, and there's lots of other ways to win hero points. Um, what, do but the, what do points mean The by main that? point is that points are actually worth something. You can spend them in the shop. So on the, on the guitar making um, website, you will see there's a shop section where you can buy um, pre-made pre fretboards are our number one selling um, item. But we also sell um, full kits, neck blanks, router cutters, and um, the exhibition tape I was talking about earlier. It's a pre-made fretboard. Um, yeah, so if you earn enough hero points, you can actually spend them in the shop and get free stuff. <laughs> don't tell him that. What? Nobody's done it yet. <laughs> So I don't know what's what's going on there, but um, at some point, um, I'm sure you'll all work it out, but it's just like instead of paying with PayPal or however you're going to pay, pay with hero points, you can actually buy real physical guitar making products. Um, just using your earnings that you've made using your hero points on the site. So hopefully that's clear. I'll try and say that as often as possible. And uh, at some point, Somebody's going to do it. <laughs> How good is that though? So you could join up for free on the forum. You can join for free and you can be earning your hero points. And if you, if you work hard enough and long enough, you can actually earn enough hero points to get a full guitar kit for free. Yeah, I'm told it, it would take a lot of post and work, but it is possible to do that. So Carol, let's do questions. A huge listener. Huge. We'll do it then. So Deej, Honestly. about... About three days ago, Deej asked, he said, I get the intonation line, however, it's sometimes, how do you get the location of the post? I think that's, I don't know if you've covered that. Okay, if you didn't get it, then um, go back and watch, because there is a section on this on the, in the courses and where I explain it much better than I did on the live stream. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, when I'm doing it live, um, I've got Carol heckling me, you lot heckling me, um, camera's not working, lights are playing up and all sorts of things going wrong. So it is wrong pretty distracting. Pants. Got the wrong pants I've on. Got the wrong pants on, apparently. And um, yeah, I end up getting distracted and going off on tangents and stuff. But the videos on the online courses are professionally edited, short, sweet and concise, step-by-step -step guides. And um, yeah, no waffle, zero waffle. One joke. I allowed myself one joke. Right. So, um, <laughs> You'll have to watch the entire five hours of material to find it. Right. Thomas Luthier, Luthier de Pobre says, never measure on both sides of the bridge position, um, but measure at the centre line only. Is that what you said? Take it from the centre line. Yeah, always take it from the centre line if he's agreeing with you. Um, Thomas says with the Gibson length it's quite easy, but when you he feels that when you're using a PRS scale length it's a nightmare. Is what he's saying. It makes no difference really. Um, the difference is a tiny fraction of a of an inch. So measure the scale length, add a sixteenth of an inch on the treble side, add an eighth of an inch on the bass side, draw a line, and then just try and line it up as close as you can. That's the simple method that works for. Carol, every time you touch that light, you know, it could disintegrate. Okay, I didn't know that. So it was just that you Last time you light. touched it, it disintegrated. Do you not remember? Do you want questions or not? Yeah, let's do these questions. Right. At Rick, D no, Rick De Natal says, do the measurements for intonation change with the scale length? Yes, but only a tiny, tiny fraction of an inch. So don't worry about it. What we do is we set it, do, do what I say, set it there. And then every bridge has an intonation adjustment. So there's always um, some intonation. Um, and there'll be enough on there, plenty on there. If you follow my method, put it, add a sixteenth of an inch or 1.5 mil to the scale length and that's where your treble string sits. Um, yeah, if you do that, then I, it'll pretty much be in tune and you'll only have to do small adjustments on each saddle. 
So yes, it does make a difference. Scale length does make a difference, but it's such a tiny difference. For measuring and marking out purposes, you would not be able to mark out that accurately anyway. Fact. Uh, of course, you could be better than me. Okay. A better man than me could measure it out more accurately. No With your laser eyes. Right, so there's a bit of discussion about Gibson scale lengths. Which Gibson scale lengths? Yes, there's, there's two commonly known Gibson scale lengths. Um, 24 and 3 quarters. Everybody says Gibson scale length is 24 and 3 quarters. But the vintage used to be 25 and I believe it's 5 sixteenths. Okay. 9 sixteenths. Um, so rock and roll. Um, oh, but sorry. when people measured it, it actually measures 24 and 3 quarters. Because obviously when you measure it, when you physically measure a Gibson, you're also including the intonation adjustment. So to get the scale length of a guitar, measure to the 12th fret and double it. And I guarantee if you do that on your guitar, measure from the nut takeoff point to the 12th fret and double it. Then if you measure from the nut takeoff point to the bridge, you'll find it's a bit longer. And that's because of the intonation adjustment. Perfect timing then, because Rock and Roller asked, do the intonation adjusters have to be in the middle point? It's a good bridge? idea if they are in the middle point, yes, before you start. Usually if you buy a bridge new, it will usually come pre-set up, don't touch it. But if it's an old bridge or you're buying it used or something, yeah, you might want to adjust the saddles to put them in the middle first. But um, just take a look at this bridge. This. Um, Notice the bass strings are further behind than the treble strings. This is brand new. It's already preset. The angle's already preset. Of course, um, the gauge of strings also affects the intonation. Um, as I said earlier, thicker strings, they go up in pitch faster when you bend them. That's why on the bass side, it's more of an angle than the treble side. The bass side is set back further than the treble side. I really should have split this into two separate streams. Okay. But hey, I was trying to do too much in one. Well, um, you'll be glad to know that it's raining so, so TV doesn't have Yay. to Yay! Like <laughs> so, <laughs> We've um, avoided mowing the lawn. It don't need mowing anyway. Leave it till next year now, innit? Yeah, well, guess what you were going to do today? No, nah, it looks like it's going to rain here as well. Put it away. So, um, uh, Mark. Uh, James Bissett was asking about our neck blanks. He did this right at the top of the program. Okay. And he said, um, "Do our neck are our neck blanks all the same? I mean, are they all the same size? Um, are this, you know, I think he's wondering about getting custom, custom sizes." Yeah, uh, I think the yeah, sizes are actually on the website. It's like a minimum size, guaranteed minimum size. They might be a little bit bigger. We can organise custom. Of course, but if you have um, a specific requirement then all you need to do is tell us because we do everything on an individual basis. And we can order stuff. So, um, yeah, and if we haven't got it, we'll get it in for you. We can but ask if, for bigger stuff. Yeah, so if you've got a specific thickness or width required, just let me know. Email me. Oh, right, another question. Um, Superclunk6, Clint in Hawaii says, what is the best way of finding the centre of a diameter of the post holes? to get an accurate fit. It sometimes it, they're sometimes a bit too tight. Yeah, well the, the easiest way to do it with this is just to mark it through your centre with something the same, the same diameter as the hole. Find something that's the same diameter as the hole is the easiest thing. Um, If I had my square, I could show you my other method of marking it out. But the square's been stolen. <laughs> Lewis has had it. Oh, well, it's, you know, I wasn't in it, so you can't blame me. Yeah, on the, the, um, on the online course, I do show you another method where we use, we use the set square to mark out the position of the bridge. It's a lot faster and easier. Um, so we do that. Poor Lewis, is what I say. Lewis, you're sacked. You've <laughs> hidden it again. <laughs> 
Um, Brad Press has suggested, what about a Brad Point drill? It's never Lewis. Brad Point drill would do it, yeah, for sure. Um, use it, I'll show you one if you don't know what one is. So, um, yeah, so in this case, that's a 6.5 mil Brad Point drill. Fits perfectly into that hole. So you could, if you lined it all up very carefully, you could use that to mark the position. I'm not going to actually do it because this is Roland's guitar and it'll go mental. Um, of course, when you, when you are marking the position of bridge, you always check three times. Check once, check twice, and because it's a bridge, it's so important, I always check three times. Um, so you can actually, when you've marked the position, you can pop your bridge on and then get your ruler out and check everything. Check three times, make sure everything's right before you, um, before you drill the holes. Even if you drill the holes in the wrong place, you can always plug them and re-drill them. So um, I think that's all covered on the course. If not, if there's any questions um, that's not covered, either in today's session or if you sign up on the course and there's something that you wanted to know that's not there, then um, all you need to do is ask and then um, we'll, we'll do our best to, uh, to answer those questions for you. Okay, um, Rick, Rick De Natal says, I'm just going to read what he says and then you can, so he says, Hey Rick. So Billy Gibson gauge strings don't need intonation since they are so thin. Um, well, I, I'm not sure about the gauge of the strings, but all strings need intonation. But thinner strings, they don't need moving so far. So less intonation adjustment for thinner strings. Okay. Um, Are we done? Almost, right. We, you, you, um, TV put up a quote right, in regard to comment earlier on, and I think it's worth mentioning this here. He said, when you say health and safety, Carol, what exactly do you mean? Those are your words from earlier on. And then there was a list Yeah, well, you just things. shout health and safety at me, and you don't give me a mask or goggles or so anything to put on my ears. So, so, in the answer so if you want that, me to do health and safety, don't just shout health and safety at right, me, but give me something to wear. Well, shall we tell people what those things are? Yeah, mask, so, no, so Matt, goggles, Matt Tomlin said headphones. eye protection, Boo said ear protection and breathing protection, TV said mouth protection, James Perry said jock strap. So you've got the full range of equipment there, health and safety. Right, I've had enough now. <laughs> Um, I've had enough now. No, but you've got one last thing to do, haven't you? What? Read that thing. Oh, I can't read out stuff. Right, right, if you're in doubt about whether my course actually works, it does. Listen to this. Dear Carol and Mark, it has now been over a year since I joined you in the workshop building my own bandsman under the tutelage of Mark. As I reflect, it has occurred to me that I left your workshop with more than a great guitar. The guitar has inspired me to play more and I've benefited from jam nights. As I've played more, I've also got better, learnt more chords and ventured into lead noodling, including the acquisition of some pedals to help my playing jump out of the mix. Can't have enough pedals, can ya? I've made new friends as a result of playing guitar, but then there is the other bonus closer to home. My guitar did inspire my son. And after spending about six weeks in lockdown building the zebra guitar with him, he has a truly great instrument. He is now having music lessons and is making progress. He came home this week with a 12 bar in A to practice, including the bounce from fifth to the sixth. It's almost sounding like Chuck Berry. What has really helped is all the parts in one set. So Jeff bought one of our kits. He did steal the Zebrano off me and trade out the pickups for Wilkinson Zebra pickups, but it's your kit made more accessible by the custom curve shape. So he's, I think the custom curve shape is also available for download. Um, they customised the answer, didn't they? they he played the verse part of Sympathy for the Devil, <laughs> which is tough, and introducing sus4 chords on A, D and E. It's a joy to see in here. 
So Jeff built a guitar with his lad and uh, now his lad's playing the Rolling Stones with it. So isn't that amazing? Um, we did actually show some pictures of Jeff's build on a previous live stream. If you hunt through enough, you might even get to see that. So thanks for that, Jeff. Um, it is nice to know, get a bit of feedback from you guys and know that it's all working. Um, when I first put these courses up, I wasn't really sure whether it was actually possible that somebody in um, Brazil or um, Holland could follow my video instructions and actually build a guitar. Um, but uh, people were signing up on it before I'd actually finished. <laughs> and uh, yeah, people building guitars right from day one. So that's five years ago now, um, the online course started. Um, we've been teaching people physically in the workshop for over 20 years now, um, over 400 people, but now hundreds more online. So it's amazing to see. And yeah, don't take my word for it. If you're not sure, head over to the, the guitarmaking.co.uk site and see for yourself. Um, if you want to support us, there's loads of ways to do it. Just leave a comment. Um, say something nice like um, to Carol. <laughs> <laughs> say thanks to Carol for amazing camera work <laughs> and uh, control of the tech. They reckon you're not getting any tea tonight. Which is a bit sexist because he makes his own tea. And uh, yeah, so shout outs to everyone. Robin, um, oh. Clinton as well. For He's another one who's been answering some questions on the blog. On the, on the forum and um, just before we go uh, just in case you're watching Bart I found another piece of older <laughs> this is the last piece of two piece older that we've got and so it's currently 47 mil I'm going to take it down to 45 for you and uh, this will be packed up and on its way um, on Monday nice two piece bit of worn, uh, older there so um, yeah if there's something that you want, folks, that's not on the website, I've got a whole wood room full of wood um, that's not all on the website. So if there's something that you want, then contact us. We might just have it. We'll be able to send it out to you. So this is, this is going to you, Bart. 45 mil. That'll be going out to you on Monday, along with that, the other stuff you wanted. So Carol's putting the bill together for you now. All being well. So cheers for that. Oh, I should have just sent you a little tip. Oh, thanks, Super Clunk. Much appreciated. Um, hopefully, somebody got something useful out of that. Uh -huh. And uh, oh, if you did, you. make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and do all the YouTubey stuff. Because uh, yeah, we want the channel to grow, and the only way to do that is if you guys tell YouTube. Somebody's got to tell YouTube and, uh, and then YouTube will tell everybody else, won't they? That's how it works. The most important thing, of course, as our regulars know, <laughs> is to check twice and cut once. Check three times, though, if it's a bridge. <laughs> check three times, cut once. <laughs>